For a while now, I've done speed sculpting videos on both my YouTube and Twitch channels, and you guys seem to enjoy them. And I've received in the past a lot of questions about my workflow and thoughts that go into it. I've realized that I've never really done a video talking about speed sculpting and its importance to my workflow. So what is a speed sculpt? Well, if speed sculpt was a drawing, it would be akin to a gestural sketch. And that gestural sketch can be of basically anything. So when I begin, I usually try to have a category in mind of what sculpt I'll be doing. Do I want to do a creature sculpt, an anatomy sculpt, a prop, or even a full scene? I usually try to categorize them by one of those categories before I begin. Determining what the category of my speed sculpt is going to be will really determine how I go about beginning the piece and the techniques that I will use within the piece itself. The piece you're seeing on the screen was just a small, simple speed sculpt that I used to warm up my hands. This was something that I used to start the stream because I plan on doing a lot more sculpting later. The category I picked for this sculpt was anatomy, and anatomy is something that I find infinitely fun to explore. It's full of amazing forms and shapes that you can play with to create a plethora of different things, and is usually the category that I go to when doing these speed sculpts. It's important to remember with speed sculpting, I'm not looking to create something final. So much of speed sculpting is based heavily in getting base form representation, testing your eyes, testing your hands to see if they can get quickly a basic representation of what's in your head. One of the nice benefits of doing something like this over and over and over again is the more comfortable you get with this process, the faster your sculpting process will become because you're gonna be able to achieve shapes that are in your head at a much easier and faster clip. So for me, really, speed sculpting has pretty much affected almost every single aspect of my art creation. Speed sculpting can have a dramatic effect on your ability to conceptualize complex 3D ideas. By not focusing on the finalized finished piece, but instead focusing on the exploration to get to those final forms, you build up those mental muscles that will aid in being able to effectively combine the forms and designs of any concept. If you can get your form and your core design ideas to line up effectively, you're going to be able to create a much stronger piece. But if you don't explore that side of the pipeline, and you don't really challenge that side of yourself, you'll find yourself far more reliant on other people's ideas and other people's concepts. By repeating the speed sculpting process, I'm not only building up those conceptual muscles, but then by presenting those speed sculpts, I'm also figuring out ways to quickly finish models and explore multiple ways of presenting them, which is building up those areas of my mind as well. Building up those presentation muscles in your mind helps keep the clarity of the idea. So much so that at times I feel like, and this may sound odd, that the character is kind of speaking to me through the piece. Once I have an idea of the lighting, of the rendering, of the presentation, kind of core in my mind as I'm sculpting it, I really do feel like at that point the character is sort of driving the piece. That said, sometimes a character won't speak to you through a piece, but it doesn't mean it, it never will. Something I love doing is going back to old pieces and tumbling around them and sculpting on them, and sometimes in doing so, my mind will click onto something, and I see this character that wasn't speaking to me before in a whole new light. I find that speed sculpting is a great way to start every morning. Uh, at least for me, I have a bit of a blank canvas syndrome, and I really don't know where to go sometimes when I'm presented with an infinite amount of options, and I find that it does impede my progress somewhat. Um, so before I do any professional work or personal work, even if it's concept driven, I start it with a speed sculpt randomly from a sphere just to get my ideas flowing, just to get my hand warmed up. I have a cup of coffee, crack open ZBrush, and I start sculpting. I recommend this workflow to any artist, really, whether it's a games artist, toy artist, film artist, you name it. I believe that starting your day with a bit of conceptual and subconscious 
work can really unlock potentials for pieces later on in the day, even if you're not doing any sculpting at all. To keep the flow of ideas moving during a speed sculpt, something that I've recommended in my mentorships and really to anyone who will listen is to not rely on using the undo key. Um, I purposely don't use the undo key for a lot of speed sculpts because I feel like when I use the undo key, especially in a speed sculpt, I find myself in a cyclical workflow undoing strokes and redoing strokes and undoing strokes and redoing strokes, working back and forth and focusing on one very small part of the model. But if you learn to let go of that psychological crutch and embrace some of the imperfections of the model and allow them to live and exist for a bit, you can then work on the model holistically. If you need to remove imperfections or change your mind on an idea, Learn to sculpt out issues as opposed to undoing them. This allows for forward movement. It keeps your hand additive and subtractively applying the clay. In that way, it keeps your mind moving on thinking about forms. Never again are you thinking about simply one piece, but quickly moving from one place to another on your entire sculpt building up all the forms holistically, as you would on an actual block of clay. You're constantly moving the pen. You're not repeating anything. You're sculpting things as it flows out of your head, and that constant moving forward allows for ideas to flow so much easier and allows for your speed to pick up dramatically. With speed sculpting, I'm thinking about the overall conceptual ideas. I'm thinking about the presentation. The speed at which we have to begin to combine these conceptual ideas with presentations relates heavily to my training as an illustrator. While being trained as an illustrator in art school, we were focused in on getting that initial read. If you think, for example, of a spot illustration in a magazine or a billboard or a piece of advertisement on the side of the road, you really only have a couple of seconds to impact the viewer. And so it then goes that the stronger the image, the easier and quicker the initial read. And that translates beautifully to how speed sculpting is. It shows you what matters to a sculpt. You don't need all of those details sometimes. It's not necessary. In this piece and in actually a lot of pieces. Sometimes by over-detailing or focusing too much on the finality of a piece, we lose some of that precious form and development of a foundation of a piece that is needed to make it stronger. Now, time does play a factor in a speed sculpt. Ideally, not overthinking things and keeping your hand loose is needed for doing a lot with a little bit of time. Everything you're seeing here, the entirety of this video that was not sped up, is about an hour and 26 minutes. That includes the rendering and everything at the end that's in Marmoset. What that means is that the actual sculpting portion of this video is about an hour and five minutes. That's about how long I usually limit my speed sculpts to. Anything more than that, and I'm doing a full sculpt. Anything less than that, and I'm not fully exploring the idea. With this sculpt, I knew I could probably go further. I knew I could detail out all of the muscles, and I could go much further into technical forms and rendering out the face. Or I could simply call this piece done. I could move it into Marmoset and simply present the idea that was in my head. I felt that this sculpt could live as a speed sculpt. The piece is done. The balance I've established in this piece is perfect for the forms that are there. If I were to detail any one portion, I would create an imbalance and the piece would then look unfinished. Something I've recommended to people that have done speed sculpting and something I recommend to people that are interested in speed sculpting is learning to work on all parts of the model at the same time. As you're watching this video, notice that I'm jumping around the model from top to bottom, from left to right, from front to back. I'm never focusing on any one part too much. That's because I'm attempting to build this model up holistically.
I am attempting to aim for primary forms and silhouette reads that are what is in my head. If I can nail those early on and quickly, then I can then begin to layer on even more tertiary details, sort of like a camera focusing in a lens. Working like this has other benefits as well. I find that by working on the model in multiple pieces at a time, I keep interested in the model. A lot of times you're sculpting something and you focus too much on one part of it or you spend too much time on a head or a pectoral muscle or a pack or a piece of clothing and you're working on it for hours on end. You begin to develop a sort of model fatigue and you lose interest in the work that you're doing. But if you keep jumping around, keep switching it up, keep exploring different options on the character as a whole, your engagement remains consistent. You keep yourself on the move, you keep yourself engaged, and you keep yourself thinking. And that's what's exciting about speed sculpting, about this process in general. I don't really know where this stuff is going. There's a purposeful, chaotic nature to speed sculpting, where you don't really have a destination in mind. And even when you do have an idea of where you think the sculpt should go, a lot of the times the sculpt has a mind of its own, and is gonna do what it's going to do. So through speed sculpting, we then learn to be flexible. We learn to be willing to change our ideas or throw them out holistically. And a big thing speed sculpting teaches us is we learn how to fail and fail fast. These pieces, well, they're quick and they're loose and you end up being okay with some of your own shortcomings or some of the things that you're not quite good at with a piece, and you can then revisit them and build upon them. It lets you be able to bounce back and forth between things, especially when they're not working. And frankly, being able to do all of this, I believe, makes you a better artist overall. If you're okay with failing, well, that means you're okay with exploring. And if you're okay with exploring, then you're okay with taking risks. And the more risks you're willing to take, the higher chances you have of making a piece that truly pushes the boundaries of what you think you can do. At this point, we do have to talk a little bit about social media and the role that it plays on how pieces are presented in our own little zeitgeist. I find that with social media and the Twitter culture being what it is, uh, the final piece is really seen as the only thing you need to show. Because why show anything else? That's going to get the clicks, of course. Because if you risk posting a really rough work in progress, so you post a really rough piece, and it doesn't get the likes and it doesn't get the clicks, well, now that doesn't encourage you to post more of those things. And I think that's just really unfortunate because we've unfortunately built an entire generation of artists that are now somewhat uncomfortable showing the rough side of their work, showing the process, because it needs to be quote unquote in a state that is always showable. Look at this video. About 90% of this video, my sculpture looks like poop. I mean, some of you might think it actually still looks like poop in the end, and hey, you're right to your own opinion. But what you're seeing here is my process. What you're seeing here is how I'm thinking about the sculpt. And I feel that that is an infinitely important aspect of the art making process, how the artist perceives the work that they're doing. It lets you into their mind a little bit. And I find this incredibly fun because this kind of borders on the idea of subconscious art. Take this piece for example. I didn't necessarily set out to make a piece about contemplation. I sort of knew it was going to fall around this area, but I didn't explicitly set out to make a contemplative sculpt. There was no theme here to work from. You get to see my mind explore a little bit and you get to see me mess up and course correct. Speed sculpting will challenge you in those ways and will force you to get comfortable with the idea that nine times out of 10, you're not gonna know where you're going. And when you don't know where you're going with a sculpt, and this may sound a little contradictive, I feel like you are the most free. 
And there's something really important about that moment, about not losing that freedom or carefree nature when it comes to viewing your own artwork, when you're kind of tossing caution to the wind and just having fun and experimenting. So much of the artwork that we produce, especially as professional artists, come with a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves. The further we get into this industry, the further we get into the career, or even those that are attempting to enter into this career for the first time, the amount of pressure we put on new pieces is unneeded. The more pressure you put on work, the harder it's going to be to start new work, the harder it's going to be to stay consistent with the work, and you end up psyching yourself out over something that should be fun, over something that should be a truly creative endeavor. But if you get used to the idea of speed sculpting every day, you'll learn to be okay with the little mistakes, and you'll learn to be okay with messing things up, and you'll learn to be okay with things just being okay. And that's what's going to make you a better artist because you can live with the micro failures. You can live without the fear of messing up because you can embrace messing up, because you know and you've learned and you've taught yourself that you've gotten really good at bouncing back from messing up. And you can focus on the work holistically and it will make you stronger. So I hope you understand a little more about why I love speed sculpting and why I do it so often. It's become ingrained in a lot of the artwork that I make and in the way that I view the creative process. It's allowed me to become far more flexible and far more quick and far more versatile than I ever would have been without it. I definitely would not be here without speed sculpting. So thank you for listening to me ramble about this stuff. This is certainly a different video than some of the stuff that I'm used to making, but I felt like this was important to talk about. And it's definitely something that I feel very passionate about and something that I'm interested in. I hope you enjoyed also watching me sculpt this little sculpt from Sphere to Final Render. And it's something that I'm happy to talk about more, especially if you want me to break down my Marmoset workflow. This video was recorded from my Twitch stream. Uh, I usually go live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash framed world, most nights, and I work on a variety of different things, mostly 3D art related. So please consider following me on there, as well as following me on Twitter. We recently just surpassed the 5,000 follower mark on there, and that's really exciting, as well as subscribing to me on YouTube where we're almost at 8,000 subscribers, which is huge for a channel that I don't really upload that much to, but I will absolutely start doing so more, especially about content like this. If you have any suggestions or things that you would like to see me talk about, whether that's game or art related or really anything else in between, I always love reading these comments. I read every single one of them and would love to hear from you. I hope you give speed sculpting a go, and I can't wait to see what you do with it. I also hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.